What? But what were we talking about first? Oh, how did, you, how did you get into dentistry? Oh. Well, that was what you asked me. <laughs> well, when I was, uh, like I said, I was working in the hospital at Pine City after I graduated. Oh, yeah. I was only there for a few months. And um, Dr. Olson, the dentist, he'd been here ever since. He's the only dentist I ever knew. Yeah. Um, he contacted my folks and asked if they thought that I would like to work for him. He wanted a dental assistant. Nobody. Nobody in the area at all, except in the Twin Cities, probably at the university, did they have dental assistants. Mm -hmm. But he was very progressive. He he uh, did a lot of studying. Uh, he belonged to so many study clubs. Every week he was going down to the city and then at night after work to study mm -hmm. clubs. And uh, he wanted to know if they thought I'd work for him. Well, they you know they told me about it, and so sure I started and worked for him. And I, that was, I worked for him for a couple of years before I was married. Mm -hmm. And then after I was married, <coughs> I, uh, well, I was married in December and, and left the 1st of April mm -hmm. to go down. I had a chance to go down to live with Chet. Mm -hmm. There was a girl, a lady from Pine City whose husband was in the Pine City National Guard, mm -hmm. and of course Chet had been in the Princeton National Guard, that's who he went in with, and they were all belonged to, I think it was the 34th Division mm -hmm. out of the Twin City, and uh, they were all encamped in the same area, you know, the same camp. And so anyway, this gal from Pine City contacted me and Chet and, and her husband, actually her husband was a captain and Chet was a sergeant or tech sergeant or something, but they, they knew each other. and. Uh, Pedro, that was her husband's name. He, um, or uh, his wife, Joe, was going to drive down mm -hmm. to be with him. Mm -hmm. And the guys were talking, and so Pedro had his wife, Joe, call me and ask me if I'd like to ride down with her mm -hmm. to go down there. So bingo, just like that, I quit my job <laughs> and drove down and went with her. And I can still remember that day when my mother was out at the car to say goodbye, you know, I'd packed up things to live down there. And she's out at the car to say goodbye, and I still remember her saying the last thing she said. I can already say it. <laughs> she said, the sunshine's going out of my life. Aww. Yeah. And I was gone for a year. Yeah. Well, we were home on furlough, though, during that year yeah. in the fall. But otherwise, I was gone for a year. And I always think back guiltily. I didn't miss her. Because <laughs> you had so much going on. That's right. And it was so exciting. It was. That's right. But and I, when I think now how she must have felt. So, let's see. Okay, so then, I, like I say, I worked those two years for him. Mm-hmm. And I never, ever even thought of going back to work. Women didn't do that then. But Mark was, I think he was, I can't remember if he was starting first grade or kindergarten uh, that spring. And uh, the, or no, he was in school. I think he was in kindergarten. And it was just before Christmas, about three weeks before Christmas. And I can remember saying that evening uh, to Chet, well, I've got everything ready for Christmas now. I think I'm going to cut out a dress for myself to have a new dress for the holidays. So I'd spread the material out on the kitchen table and had my pattern and everything, and the phone rang. And it was the girl who was the dental assistant for him at the time, for Dr. Olson. Mm -hmm. She wanted to know if I'd go to work for her the next day. She was sick. But she didn't tell me. She's going to the hospital and having a, that she was on the verge of a miscarriage. Oh, she was really sick. Yeah. yeah, but she didn't tell me that. Just could mm -hmm. I go to work for her the next morning? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, gosh, I said, I haven't worked for so long. I don't think I'd be any good. Oh, if you just please come to work. So I went to work. And I still remember because I walked into the operatory and the medical doctor, Dr. Nelson, happened to be the patient in the chair. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Olson was there, you know, and I went, walked in and said, good morning. He said, well, good morning, Maddie. And I said, well, weren't you expecting me? Because he said it's so surprised, you know. And he said, well, no, but I can't think of anybody I'd rather see. Just like that. 
And then I worked for her, like to say, 25 years. Yeah. She never came back to work. Oh. Well, she couldn't. She had, she had a miscarriage, I think. Kind of like Lou Gehrig. I don't know what. You know, the first baseman for the Yankees. Oh, yeah, the I guy, know what you mean. I know yeah, the guy, Wally, Wally Pip or Walter Pip, he got, uh, had a, got out of the lineup and Lou Gehrig played for 18 or 20 years in a row. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that about Lou Gehrig. Yeah. Didn't he have a record that Cal Ripken was beating? Yeah, he played every day for 18 or 20 years. And who did you say he replaced? Wally Pip. Pip. Yeah. I've never heard How of him. How do you know that? Wally Pip is ju he's just an, a uh, an asterisk in history because he he was the first baseman before Lou Gehrig. Was it, did they play from the... The Yankees. The Yankees. Yeah. I still kind of like the Yankees. Nobody ever cheers for him, but, but I, I just do. I liked uh, Derek Jeter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We saw him. Did you really? Right? When he played for the, uh, the Firebirds? Is he Dutch? Oh, I yeah. don't think Lou Gehrig, I mean, um, Derek Jeter is, no, Derek Jeter is not Dutch, he's um, slightly colored. Dutch uh, in might, he be, might he be more like Jamaican or something like that? Could be. I think so. I don't know. But the Nether Netherlands Antilles or something down there? I thought for some reason we saw him when he played in, at the old, at the stadium in Scottsdale, hmm. when he played for the... San Francisco farm team down there. I, I don't know his history. The Firebirds, yeah, weren't they the farm team? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll look and see. Yeah, see my memory well, he is. must have been very young then because he's played for the Yankees for so long and he was pretty young then. Well, this was before the kids were born. I was pregnant with Cole. Mm -hmm. Well, that could be. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think that's who it was. And then I like uh, Joel, their manager, Joel Torrey. Joel Torrey, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw something cute on TV here within the last week or so where a um, little boy, <coughs> I can't remember what had happened to him, but they were tre treating him. Mm -hmm. <coughs> One of those, um, well, you know, where your wish, they'll wish for anything. Make a wish, yeah. <coughs> and he was a great Yankee fan, this little kid. And uh, they took him. First, I don't know where he was, but anyway, uh, uh, Derek Jeter comes walking in, and all oh, the kid went, he just couldn't believe it, you know. Well, then they had it all planned. They took him to the ballpark, and the, and he was in the, I'm going to say locker room, but did you ever see what one of those rooms looked yeah. like? Yeah. <laughs> and they had one for him. And they gave him some of his jerseys, and oh, it was just everything. He was mm. a, he was a, Oh, oh, and he met Joe Torrey, too. Well, he met all of the fellas, in fact, but they did show him when he met Joe Torrey. Yeah. No, I was, I like the, I know there's things bad about it, but I like the Yankees. <laughs> so what do you watch in the winter, basketball? Uh-huh. Constantly, the Timberwolves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I was going to tell you guys this on the way home, and I forgot it when we were at the casino last night. This gal that I said was so nice, that Carrie that took me over mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. um, she was telling, I said something about, I said, there's a pretty good crowd here tonight, isn't there? And she said, yeah. She said different things were going on, but one thing was that the um, Vikings had a um, uh, motorcycle mm -hmm. trip up there, and it's for some cause. I saw it on the... I saw it in the news that later... I saw it on the back of the bathroom stalls, because oh, if you, you signed up for it, you got a free um, Minnesota Vikings do-rag for your head. Oh. <laughs> and I just thought that was well, so funny that that was cool a for, promotion for, that for you get a do-rag. Yeah, but from coming the bikers, it was, that was great. That must have been the bikers we saw in Harris coming up. It probably was. There were quite a few. Uh -huh. Well, she said it's a really pretty big deal. They've done it for several years. Mm -hmm. Go up there. I know that um, the Timberwolves, I know, have had golf tournaments up there. Um, uh -huh. No, I, I followed, well, Carol and I both, we just, she comes over a lot of time in the evening, and they have a great big, great big screen. What are they, 50 or 55 inch, something like that? Yeah. You need one of those. 
Okay, Randy. <laughs> now you want to inherit it? <laughs> well, now, come on, Grandma. How old is your console TV? Hmm? How old is that console TV? Oh, let's see. I don't know. It's, it, isn't, it isn't an antique by any chance. It's probably... No, wait a minute, I can think and I can tell you. That year that Cammy and I went down... Gee, I've been to Florida lots of times. I'd forgotten about that trip. <laughs> we went down when Colleen lived down there. Yeah. It was the, it was at that time, or during that time when I bought that this one. Early 80s? I... No, 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 no. Early 90s. Hmm. Probably 92 or 93. Okay. Hmm? I'll believe you. And in fact, Randy's the one that they had been down. They were looking. In fact, they almost bought it. They'd been down one day. You know, he's a great. They're great shoppers. Mm -hmm. And they like to. Every weekend they do something. You know, they they both drive to work every day during the week. But on the weekend they have to get in the car and go somewhere. Go somewhere. <laughs> they're and, used to and it. They're great, yeah, they're great shoppers. And uh, they were in the market for a TV. I don't know, it was either for upstairs or downstairs. Mm -hmm. And so they would come home and they were telling me that about this size one and they had looked at it and so on. And they decided I should look at it. And that maybe they would take my TV that mm -hmm. I had. Or else it was, I don't know if it was the TV or the TV stand they wanted. Yeah. And so we went down, I, if I remember right, I think we bought it at Best Buy in Rosedale. Mm -hmm. but. Randy's the one that manages it all. <laughs> but then he's he's so good. I mean, he'd hook everything up and and take care of it. From he he comes every well almost every time he comes here, he goes down in the basement just to check to see that everything's okay, and he he always checks my um, water softener. Mm -hmm. I must have the greatest water softener in the world because. We bought it, Randy and I bought it. It's at least four years ago. Mm -hmm. And we got a, two free bags of salt with it. And I'm still on the second bag. And I've had lovely soft water the whole time. But it's the, okay. kind, it's the kind that only charges when it needs it, whereas the old ones used to be on a timer. Mm. Let's see, water softener, TV, airplanes, what's the greatest invention you've seen in your lifetime? Well, I, to me, I, not that it's that great, but I think the most unusual thing is, uh, like when I was a kid, I could never have imagined a picture coming in the air mm -hmm. like we get TV. And I, I think that would probably be, to me, it would be the most unusual. Mm -hmm. And now... Um, I'm completely uh, illiterate as far as the internet is concerned. I, I, do, I just don't know a thing about it. If I was 10 years younger, I would go to school because they have courses every once in a while down the street here at school mm -hmm. and learn. But I have no reason to now. You can make the print on a computer big enough so that you can see it easily. Well, I don't think I lack for reading. Information. Yeah. <laughs> I usually kind of get what I see when I want to see, somehow. Mm -hmm. Except that I just, I still can't just pick up a book and read it that. You know, I mean, it's too tiring to, with a magnifying glass. And, and it's too much of a strain on my eyes, really. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when I do read like something I want, I just, but by the time it's night, I, oh, I just got to go to bed. My eyes are so. Tired. But you listen to books on tape. Yeah, but I don't right now because I don't have that here anymore. Don't I bought your tape player? <laughs> Randy. Randy took it? <laughs> well, they bought it for me. For, no, oh. my, my CD player, they bought it for me, I think, for yeah. my birthday. And uh, then he had said, well, he said, if you want to exchange it, you, you know, if I didn't like it or something. They were trying to buy something that was, that was the most simple because I could see yeah. the buttons. I never did use anything except that, and I think it had a radio on it, too. But then he also told me months later that if I wanted to exchange it, 
we still had the box for it, and I had the receipt. I could exchange it and get something that had the tape player in it too. Uh -huh. So that's what. That's why I don't have anything here now. He's exchanging it for you. Hmm? He's exchanging it for you. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. He'll get me a nice one. I bet he will. I do have a good tape player and radio in that little room back there, but the only time I really listened to it was like if I was ironing or or doing something back there, and, and you have to have it so blastedly loud if you're going to enjoy it out here. Yeah. Oh, it's not portable? Yeah, oh. it is. It's it's probably about, you know, like oh, yeah. about that good long. Size. It's, it's a nice one. I'm trying to get rid of um, radio and... Um, it's got a place for cassettes, and on top of it, I had sometime years ago I ordered this uh, record player mm -hmm. that's connected and, and all into the mm -hmm. code boxes. You know, I'm trying to get rid of that, but I don't think anybody even wants them anymore. Tony just bought a record player. Oh, you're kidding. You know why? Uh -uh. She has records from. She just bought them at the antique store in Aiken. What was it? I said Bozo the Clown. Oh, or really? some morning show when she was a kid. Really? And when her mom passed away, her, her brother took every, a lot of stuff. And they let him have it because he was the youngest. He was the baby. Uh -huh. And um, she thinks he sold a whole bunch of it without telling them. Oh. So she saw him the other day in Aiken. She's like, oh, i got to buy these. She found some, you said? Yeah, at, a, at an antique store. Really? In Aiken, yeah. No, I used to enjoy it. I was right in there by my bed. And I also uh -huh. had that radio thing also had an ear, uh, earphone attachment, so I didn't have to have it. You know, I could lay in bed with just the earphones, and I really enjoyed it. But I don't use it anymore. Don't you have your Tommy Newsom? What's his name? Newsom? No. You mean Record. Tommy? Newcom New? No. Such an N. There he is, Netherton. You had him on records. Oh, lots of Look records. Look at that, I huh? All kinds of tapes. Well, you want to know? No, I must tell you that you, story. You know, Wade doesn't know anything about your Tom doesn't Netherton he? thing. That's uh -uh. another one of my tell boyfriends. We were at, it was Mother's Day, and Colleen and her had given, some of the kids anyway, had given us tickets for a Lawrence Welk show that was going to be at Orchestra Hall. And we were down in the city, well, Chet and I had gone down Saturday morning and stayed overnight. And we had, the whole family had gone out for dinner Sunday. And then we were to go to this concert at, in the evening, which we did. And I didn't even really feel like going to it because I, it was only a few months before that I'd had back surgery. And I was really tired out, but we had to go. So we get in there and our tickets were right in the very front row, right on an aisle. Chet sitting on the aisle and me next. And the show started. And uh, then Tom came out. And he gave, a, this was just a public concert, but he gave a little religious testimony how he had lived in Richfield and um, how he had found Jesus Christ. But he, it was a really a touching thing he gave. And then he said, well, he said, now I'm going to come down. I'm going to come down and sing to somebody. He comes down the steps. Now, you understand, we had come on Saturday morning, left here. Chet and I slept on the floor up in a bedroom at Colleen's house. I hadn't washed my face. I had a wig on. And we had shopped on Saturday. So bummed around, you know, and like I said, I hadn't even washed my face. He comes down the steps, right, and I can remember trying to shrink under Chet's shoulder. <laughs> I still remember that so well. Comes right over and knelt down in front of me, and then picked me up and sang to me with these thousands of people. And I can remember I, I was so self-conscious of the way I looked that I kept looking at him, and he's only six foot five against little me, <laughs> and I kept looking up at him so that he wouldn't look at me, thinking he'd glance away. Well, he sang to me, and when he got through, he bends over and gives me a big kiss and a hug. Then he walked over to Chet, and he said, I hope you didn't mind. 
Well, Chad used to tell the story when he told it, you know, so, well, what could I say? He said that great big six foot five SOB. <laughs> <laughs> but then he said to Chet, he said, um, what kind of music do you like? And Chet said, oh, I like any kind of music. And he said, well, I'm going to sing a whatever, country western, I think he said. I think he sang something like Tie a Yellow Ribbon or something. I don't remember that. Mm. Okay, so we're sitting there while he's singing this next number. And I said to Chet, what was that song he sang to me? She couldn't remember. I asked the lady that was sitting next to me, she couldn't remember. We asked the people behind us, they couldn't remember it. To this day, I can't remember the song he sang. <laughs> but it really was a thrill. <laughs> Your brush with celebrity. Yeah, my big time. <laughs> my big time. 15 minutes. With Tom, the other 10. You don't watch Lauren's Walk on TV anymore, do you? I must confess, when you guys left last night, I ate that. Remember you put that plum sauce in the fridge for me? I ate that, and I looked at, over to the clock, and I thought, what time does that say? I thought it was five something. Well, no, I remember I asked you, and you said it was going on six or something. So I got up and walked over to the thing and looked, and it was 6.55 or something. Lawrence Wilk had come on at 6 o'clock, and I missed it last night. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if I can get through the week. Aren't they repeats, though? Oh, they're all old. Some you, could, of you could just relive, oh, sorry, you could just no, relive some, one in No, your... some of them, I mean, they're, I, they're just, they're so old that, yeah, I, the only good thing is you could tell how, really, he did have a wonderful band at the end. Mm-hmm. And, and way, way back, it wasn't nearly that good when they played oh. some of those real old ones. But Lawrence Ray really was quite a man. Yeah. What other artists or, um, or events that are memorable to you? Like culture? Or culture, yeah, cultural. Like pop culture. And... Oh, I don't know. I, I really can't think. So nothing. <laughs> no, but the I've TV always, brought you sports. No, I've always enjoyed walking. like uh, like when we've gone to Chan Hassan and the Old Log Theater. I've been, I've really enjoyed those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And I've been to uh, well, I can't think of the name of it now. That hall in St. Paul. Oh, the Ordway. Oh yeah, I've been the there a number one? of times oh, there. Yeah. But no, I'm trying to think of that one. It's named after a colored man. That's the last place that I saw Lawrence Wilk before, I mean, he was on a retirement tour, and that's, we went down to that. It's the only time I'd ever been to that hall. You'd know it if I said it, but I can't think of it. Lawrence Wilk is retired? Oh, he's dead. <laughs> he's probably playing up in heaven. If he went there. <laughs> oh, if? <laughs> Listen to you. Well, I think he probably had a, had his youth, uh, some of those guys, I, I have heard, you know, they were heavy drinkers, some of those good old musicians. Um, did, did you see the movie, the Johnny Cash movie? No, I wanted to see that. Cammy and Randy saw it and they thought it was just real good. It was real good, but it had that, it, re it reminded me of that because he was, sit as a young man, he was sitting around with what, Elvis and... Buddy, not Buddy Holly, but Jerry Lee Lewis and stuff, and that's what they did before concerts, is they just sat around and, and drank. drinking. And, yeah. That was before yeah. drugs. Yeah. No, he was well, a I mean, cocaine addict. Well, yeah, they yeah. were, but, but, but it wasn't a, you know, Yeah, not in the 50s. Not like it is, no. 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 So you're, who knows what Lawrence Welk was like off stage, huh? Well, I, I really shouldn't say that so much about him, but I've heard that about um, the guy that played the trombone and he's played with him for years and years, and he's a very good trombone player. Mm -hmm. And then he used to have a fellow, I always thought he was a Mexican, that played uh, reeds. He played the uh, mm -hmm. saxophone and played the clarinet. Oh, he was an excellent player. In fact, I've seen him on some, once, maybe once every two years, they'll have a, like a Lawrence Welk Memories and all these old people. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, his old stars come back <laughs> and perform. Henry Quesna, that was his name. Does that sound like he'd be Mexican? Quesna? Anyway, he, 
he was excellent. I used to just love to hear him play. But now, in the last couple of years, he has died too. Mm. No, that was quite an organization, really. It was kind of like a big family, I think. Yeah. And did you ever hear Norma Zimmer that was the, she was the last, what did they call her, champagne lady? No. Uh -uh. She, what did she do? A, a singer. So oh, she was a singer. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a nightclub? But no. What do they call no. her champagne lady? What would, what well, because Lawrence Wilk always, I don't know, they called it the champagne, I don't know if it was a champagne band, but they always opened the show with all the bubbly champagne. Yeah. And he always has, always over the years had one woman who was a champagne lady and in, in, in these, re, uh, these uh, get-togethers that they have, there's about at least four of those old gals that still come back. Hmm. And of course my Tom comes back. Yeah, he's still around. Tom had um, two of her places now out east, like out in um, Virginia, either Virginia or West Virginia. I think it was in Virginia. Would, yeah, Virginia would be closer to Washington, D.C., wouldn't it? Than mm -hmm. West. He had a um, little um, night or uh, like a dinner theater where he entertained. Well, then that got to be so big or that he outgrew it, and he moved to um, some place nearby. I can't just remember the name of it. And uh, he had, it was called Music Hall, I think. Mm -hmm. And now I've heard since then that he's out of that, and I don't know what he's doing. Branson, probably. Oh, he's been at Branson for mm -hmm. with the Lord's well. For yeah. As a matter of fact, we were going to go to Branson, and we were planning it. And so I called down there um, because I wanted to go to the Lawrence Welk Theater if he was if he was going to be present. Mm -hmm. And I called down there to get the schedule, and they said, "Oh, you just missed him. He was here yesterday." And they, they, she wouldn't give me any schedule, but he was going to be there ahead. So it, it was just. How close. long ago was that? You ask such hard questions. Let's see. Well, it wasn't like this year. No. No. It was probably maybe four years ago. Mm -hmm. Had to be more than that because it was before I broke my ankle. Probably six years ago. You know, if you say four years ago, it's probably six. Okay. At least. Got like it. eight. Double it. <laughs> Let's see. No, that television has got to be 20 years old. <laughs> well, I know it when I got that television. <laughs> The reason, it's really funny, you know, I know when it was because I was down, right after I got it, I was down in Florida with Kemi and I went down with Colleen, mm -hmm. or two Colleen. And she had two f fellas that worked in the same company as she did that lived not real close to, like kind of around the bend from where her apartment was. And we were over to their place one evening and they had just gotten a new TV and it was the same, 27 inch, the same as mine, and I had just gotten mine. That's the only way I can remember when I got that TV. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. We talked about New York yesterday. You went to Seattle. What's the coolest place you've ever visited? What vacation did you like the most? I loved every year when you we went to Florida. Yeah. What's so special about Florida? Oh, we had friends. For the last couple of years, we lived in a neighbor. It was called the New York section. <laughs> One of the streets was New York. Oh, okay. Street, I thought it was our, But ours was one block, the next block. And I can't remember the name of ours. I thought of that the other day. I, but anyhow, the people who lived on each side of the home that we lived in, we lived in a home that was owned by people from Canada. And the people on the one side of us were friends of them, and they had built next door. And these two women worked in the hospital. They were nurses in the hospital yet in Canada. And they built these homes with the idea of retirement homes. Mm -hmm. Well, the one family, she would never let her place out to anybody. But these people rented it out through um, uh, whatever you are. Um, realtor. Through a realtor. 
So before we left Florida one year, we went to this realtor to make arrangements for a place for the next winter. And that's the house that we got. Very lovely, much, much nicer than anything we ever had. And as a matter of fact, they had an automatic garage door opener that Chet thought was just the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so we stayed in the, that place for two years. And then these people were going to come down the next year, so we couldn't have it. Mm. But their friends, Betty next door, who would never rent her house out because it was too perfect, and she rented it to us because these people told we were okay. Mm. So she rented it to us. But in the meantime, we had gotten to know the people on the other side. They used to go to church with us, and the guys golfed together, and two or three other families down the street. Plus, there was at least a dozen families from around here that were down there in wow. Port Charlotte. So every day, we never were, we never stayed home one day in the three months we'd be down there. Every day we went someplace. And you know, I always felt like, uh, to this day, I feel like I knew Florida better than I do parts of Minnesota. Huh. Because we, we just did the country. Yeah, you were out. And, and I loved it. And you know, it was so nice because we'd come down there and these, some of the, these people, other people were permanent residents. So they'd just kind of be looking until we'd get down there, you know. It was good old days then, because we'd play cards together and had great times. And then we were there three months, and we'd come back home. Oh, everybody back here is so happy to see you, you know. <laughs> Pretty soon it was time to go again. What city were you in in Florida? Port Charlotte. Port Charlotte. It's just above um, Fort Myers, about 25 miles. One year... No, wait a minute. No, two years we were in uh, Naples. Mm -hmm. And we had, uh, well, he was a cousin of Irene's husband, Les, mm -hmm. who they had been raised together practically. Pep was this guy's name. When, and I had known him from back here, like before I was even married. He'd come up. Um, well, Les, all, Les also stayed at our house, room and board at times. Oh. He worked for the power company, but he wouldn't be in Rush City all the time, but he'd stay with my folks when he did come. And that's how we got to know Les, Irene mm -hmm. Sussman. Mm -hmm. And this was his cousin Pep and his wife, who lived in Naples. So we knew them, mm -hmm. and, and we knew some other relatives down there, too. So that was, that was fun in Naples, but that was a lot. We didn't have the good times, like playing cards every night and doing stuff like that. We played cards almost every night, and Barbara, that was Chet's cousin's wife, Barbara and Alan Rabadou, they, they always went down to, we didn't stay together, but we did everything together. And Barb kept track, she kept the tally cards, we didn't know this, from every game we played, and it, we'd always play for money. No. <laughs> Of course, we all teased Chet that it was bitch, 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 always, because he didn't win. <laughs> In fact, we went to a flea market and it was, you know, baseball caps like this, bitch, bitch, and we bought it for him. Okay, but, but the thing is, you know, you know, you just play for everything, win those few little dollars that you win. And uh, she kept track of all this and added them up at the end before we came home. And you know that it was all, everyone was almost even as far as as much as they had won over all those months. <laughs> uh, oh, that was fun. I always remember the Barbara and Alan were in a, a real nice house too. In fact, part of it was closed off that they couldn't go in those rooms; they were locked. But there was a baby grand piano in there, and it was nice. We're sitting in the kitchen. I, it was just chatting. Barbara and Alan and me that evening. Yeah, we'd been playing cards. We, oh, there had been company, that's right, earlier. And they'd gone, but we had a lot of dirty dishes. And so we put the dishes, she'd never used the dishwater, dishwasher there, but she decided to use it that night, so she puts the dishes in there. And she didn't realize she didn't have any dishwasher, so, so she put a little bit of regular dishwasher that you would use in the sink, you know. Mm -hmm. you know. And what was she thinking? We're playing cards there, not too far away, like right over here. We're playing cards. 
all at once. <laughs> this, all at once, it's just like in a movie. <laughs> all this foam <laughs> come floating out all over the floor. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> Did you do that? Yeah. Did you just explode like yeah. that? I have a picture of And him. it just kept creeping toward us. <laughs> He had a frying pan. We were living in Colorado and we didn't have anything. We didn't have any chairs in our living room. We had moving boxes, uh -huh. some camp chairs, and a TV. That was it. And it was just all boxes. And all we had, I don't know, we didn't have towels or what, but he had a, he's down here with a frying pan trying to scoop up all the boxes <laughs> and put them in the sink. And it's a picture of him scooping and the cat sitting there just looking at him. <laughs> you fools. <laughs> So I, I guess it's an easy mistake. Huh? I always felt like it was just like a movie. I can't even think of her name now. I know, you know, the redhead. Uh, Lucille Lu Ball. I thought it should have been Lucille <laughs> Ball. <laughs> it was funny. Oh, we had so many good times. I'm so glad that Chet lived long enough after he retired to be able to enjoy it like he did. Yeah. It's funny how fate d does things to you. That. Um, I suppose it was probably about in November of 1986. Um, that's when he was started doctoring. But he, he bought this new car. And we had a nice little uh, Buick. It was, um, oh, I can't think what it is. Anyway, it was a couple years old. I think it was maybe three years old. And uh, I don't know why, he just got the bug before we are going to go away that we should get a new car. So I wasn't, I didn't say it, but I, I thought, geez, that's just, we didn't really need it, you know. But I can still remember that weekend, Mark happened to be home and we'd gone down to the Chevrolet down here in Buick and we're looking and, oh, they had this nice black Buick on the floor. Well, we ended up buying it. And I, I just felt like we really didn't need it. Okay, so we take off for down there with this new car. And how lucky, because then he died in the spring. Now I have a nice, decent car that I don't have to worry about for quite a few years. Like I said, it's kind of like fate. Mm -hmm. But he didn't get to, oh, another thing he didn't get to enjoy. Like I said, he was so thrilled over that garage door opener mm. in his house. He thought that was really neat. Of course, it was a big, great big, big double garage, you know. Well, that Christmas of December of 86, is that a signal? No. Oh, that December of 86, at Christmas, all the kids, I know your your dad was in on it, they, they gave us a garage door opener for Christmas. Well, we were leaving the next day for winter. So we, it wasn't installed or anything, but when we came home, Chet never came home here. Mm -hmm. But when I came home, I had the garage door opener, <laughs> automatic opener. And I thought he never got to enjoy that. Aww. That was too bad. <laughs> no, he thought that, as a matter of fact, I know it, this just comes back to me. I don't remember what the situation was, but we were gone for the day. And when we came home, couldn't open the garage door. I think he left the, I don't know what he did. If he left it in the house, or the opener, the garage was closed. And mm -hmm. he had to call a locksmith to come and get the garage door open. And you know, we didn't even think of as green as we were. That's a racket, I guess, getting into people's places. You could call and say, will you come and open my garage? Yeah, and they just come do it, wouldn't ask for ID or out, anything. Clean yeah. out everything. We didn't know that. Well, you've never had any crime here, though, have you? Never had anything stolen? No. Other than the neighbor kid, but he was just a little odd. Yeah. Well, no, there there is stuff in... Uh, mm hmm Yeah, in fact, we had a car stolen right out in front of our house. It was parked there. Oh, mine's still there. <laughs> Thought maybe you're having a crime wave. But you know that talking about stealing like that, um, I had a friend who they used to live in Texas, and she she was telling us that uh, they had had four new tires put on their car, and they they didn't have the car in the garage. It was outdoors, right next to their house, and by gosh, the tires were stolen off from it. 
Do you remember when that happened to Colleen? Yes. <laughs> that was the whole wheels, wasn't it? It was the whole wheels, and she didn't know, and she backed it up off, well, and it, it fell off just... the cement blocks. Yeah. <laughs> they put it on blocks. And you know what I think, she had Cassie? A you know what I think they did with that car? Huh? I think they eventually pushed it down the street, probably three blocks, and said that it was stolen. Oh. <laughs> I really, truly think that happened. Yeah. I've never said that to her, but I do. They wanted to get rid of it, I know that. That's one way to do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's so funny. Did you ever remember that husband of hers, uh -huh. Jerry? Uh-huh. She sees him every once in a while. You know I remember him? Uh-huh. He used to smoke pot. Did he? Yeah, because my parents would go over there with Cammie and Randy and they would come out of there and they'd drive us home and they would talk about being small and look at the small <laughs> stop sign. Yeah, but I usually could smell pot a mile away and I never and he, smelled that. It was outside. You oh. weren't there. Oh. It was at the, because he had that No, but I mean the if, they were, if they were in the habit of doing it, it. I don't know if they were in the habit of doing oh. it. I just remember this one instance. Well, anyway, she said pipe. you'd never know him now. She said he's uh, completely bald. Yeah. And she had a big beard. Mm hmm But she, he was a neat guy, though. Jerry. Was he? Oh, yeah, he was. I don't remember that much about him. No, he was a real nice guy. They had a fancy house, and he always seemed like he was kind of a, I don't know, connoisseur. Or... Oh, he was a little upper class. Kind yeah, of. kind of guy. Yeah. I always wondered after if he might have been gay. You know, Colleen never to this day ever said anything. I have never heard her say a derogatory word about Jerry. Really? Uh-uh. And I don't know what ever separated them. Mm-hmm. But I just kind of, he play, he sang in, um, oh, what do they call that men's choir in, in St. Paul? Oh, I don't know. Well, no, Minneapolis, because I remember one time Chet and I went down to a, one of their concerts. Oh, I didn't know it was a bit. Oh yeah, he was. He played the piano beautifully. I know. I remember hearing him play uh -huh. the piano, and he sang. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered afterward if maybe he was gay because I now the only choral group like that I hear is the men's gay. There's mm -hmm. a huge men's gay choral group in St. Paul. Well, here you know. Here you go, Grandma. This is what the internet is good for. Uh -huh. We could look it up and find out. Really? Find out what he does. I don't mm -hmm. need to know. Really, I don't <laughs> need to know. Best I don't. I don't think I could spell his last name anymore. I can't even remember what it was. Stensible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Once again, brain space wasted on that information. I hardly knew him. But they I, did have that nice house in the ri in the river, on the river. House on the river? He had a house in the river. Maybe when they were first dating or something. Because then they lived in Minneapolis, but he yeah, had a but house along the river in St. Paul. They lived over on Emerson Avenue. Emerson Avenue, but the, before that he had a house in the river. Well, he we had a house on the river. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yes, that's right. Well, he had a riverboat, too. Oh, I didn't know. Because we all were on that. Oh, I don't remember that. Did you ever meet uh, Betsy from uh -huh. South Carolina? Or Brazil. South Carolina. Blot that up. From Brazil, yeah. That, that's all I know is Betsy from Brazil. Huh? Betsy from Brazil, that's all I know about Do you know where she is now? Yeah, somewhere in town here, right? Huh? In Texas or in town here? She's with Axel of Guns N' Roses. She's his, you might say his mother. Yeah, you said he was like his the band manager, his personal manager or something. Because he's like a baby. Yeah. He's like a little kid. I was listening he's to a radio show about him because you told me that last year when oh, we were out here. Oh, did I? And um, I was listening to a radio show when we were driving out, and it was all about him spending the last 10 years in the studio, getting his life or in order and putting out a new album. And I thought of her. He's a very strange person. Mm -hmm. But this, this last year, and in fact it's not too many months ago, Colleen was out to California. Mm -hmm. with a, she'd gone out with a, another girlfriend, not on business. Mm -hmm. And um, they ended up calling uh, Betsy. Uh huh. And she and this gal friend went over to. The, they they don't really live at his house. They have another lovely home. Mm -hmm. She and her two brothers and her. No 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 wait a minute not her two brothers Betsy's two sons. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any of those kids? She was an exchange student. 
Oh, yeah, this is, she's been back and forth. Yeah, I know she's been back and forth once or twice. Um, yeah. She has two brothers and, no, two sons and a daughter. Mm -hmm. And they are, all of them are working for Axel. And they live, like Colleen said, a beautiful home. But she was in Axel's place because mm -hmm. one of the brothers was staying there, taking care of it right at the time, mm -hmm. he and his wife. You wouldn't believe the tales that she told of that house. <laughs> and he, th and I think he keeps all those people. Yeah. Pays for all of them. And they'll, they'll, the whole bunch, maybe one of them will stay back home to take care of things. The whole bunch of them will go, like, say, to Spain or to France or someplace. From you know several months at a time, and he's working there. Mm-hmm. Kind of how long has she been doing that for? Quite a while now. Yeah. Yeah. She was here um, a year ago last. A year ago this summer, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She and her sister, and you'd never know it was her sister. She didn't even. She didn't look like her. I mean, she wasn't even colored like you know. Betsy yeah. was quite tan. Yeah. I wouldn't say she was black. She wasn't that way, but she was quite dark skin, mm -hmm. and the sister wasn't like that at all. In fact, the sister was kind of more like Tony. Oh. <laughs> we had more fun with her. Colleen and Bob entertained us all when she, Betsy came up. Mm -hmm. Betsy and her sister came up. They were in the city at the time. But, oh, my gosh, when Colleen came home and told all that, it was out of this world. <laughs> Well, it's interesting they kept in touch with her too because it was so long ago. Huh? Where did who had who was the who had Sponsor? Betsy come over the first time? Yeah. Originally, she was with Aunt Bobby. Okay, that's what I found. And uh, she didn't get along with uh, Leslie, or Leslie didn't get along with her. Let's put it that way. Hmm. Yeah. I can remember her saying that girl's going to be in trouble the way she acts around boys, and she was probably only. 13, maybe 13, Leslie, yeah. 14 years old, and Betsy just, Betsy wasn't that kind of a gal, mm -hmm. and um, she didn't get along there, so then Colleen and um, Randy, when Colleen was married to Randy. It was that long ago Betsy mm -hmm. was here first? Well, she was just in high school. Yeah. And they took her. Yeah. So that's how she got to be friends of the, well Orleans, then, um, yeah. then one of her brothers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Those were brothers. She had, she had two brothers. I was calling them sons, but she does have two sons. Yeah. But I think it's her two brothers that uh, are with Axel. Uh -huh. But I know her daughter is. Anyhow, um, they... Uh, Betsy and one of them came and stayed for some time at Colleen's when Colleen was living on Emerson. Yeah. Well, then um, one of the boys came and st and went to um, St. Thomas, I think it was. Okay. And he was, well, yeah. In fact, he was here again just a couple of years ago. Yeah. So they kind of, this one just kind of treats Colleen. I think he calls her mother. Yeah. And he's the one that... Uh, was staying at Axel's house when she was down there now, and, and he and his wife and the, and the one that took. She said he never let go of her all the time they were there. So, have you ever listened to Axel Rose's music? No. Okay, just checking. Huh? Just checking. No, <laughs> I haven't. I can remember um, a few years ago when Aunt Bobby was still in her house. Yeah. It must have been. No, Christmas. No, it wasn't Christmas. It was when she still had Thanksgiving, and uh, Betsy called. Mm -hmm. And oh, and these young kids, like the twins, uh, and I don't know who. There was other young kids. Oh, they were all hipped up, for telling her to get them this and that from Axel. You know, autographed from Axel. Uh, they're talking on the telephone. They were all so thrilled because Betsy was working for Axel. When was the last time Aunt Bobby had Thanksgiving in her house? Hmm? When was she, when did she have Thanksgiving? Uh, I went once and it was in a church hall or something. We didn't have it at her house anymore. Oh, I remember. That was before she quit having it at her house. Though. Oh, I that did. was just some random something year? That we went, she, that, I don't think that was Thanksgiving. 
That was something else. What in the heck was that? It was... Um, what in the world was that? That wouldn't have been... I don't know, but it was when Nicholas was born. So it was 19 years ago, 20 years ago. Because it was when Nicholas, my parents took Nick on a vacation to, to her parents in Michigan. Yeah. And Corey Lynn and I came on Thanksgiving. I don't think Kelly was there. I think it was just Corey Lynn and I came. And the only thing anyone said to her was, Oh, how's it be feel being away from your baby for the first time? And they kept saying that over and over. And Corey was like, <laughs> Well, but, but we I'm were sure, in a, I'm sure it was a church hall or something. Yeah, but you know? I don't think that was Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. Would it have been um, an. I thought you were just tired of cooking and No, house. no, 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 because she entered. It, it got so that we didn't want her to entertain. And she insisted on it because you could tell by the time you got there, well, you know how her house was always cluttered. But yeah. You couldn't put a thing on the cupboard. And and the food, uh, she had that buffet that was just loaded with hors d'oeuvres. I mean, an army could have eaten off from it. But she had to get that cleared off to put the dinner on. Mm -hmm. It was just food galore. Mm -hmm. and, we tra and, and we could tell the last few times we came there, she was so frustrated, she was almost cross. Mm -hmm. Of course, Leslie and she were working together, and you know, that was friction itself. Leslie was a good worker for her mother, but it was, you know, how, you know how sharp she was oh. and crude. But um, we, we could tell it was just, it was just too much for her. Yeah. Uh, but it was hard convincing her that she shouldn't entertain anymore. Well, she's been used to doing it for so many years. Oh, yeah, she did it way back when Uncle Les was alive that we used to go for Thanksgiving. Mm hmm You never knew him. Mm hmm He, too, if you only could have lived, oh, how he would have enjoyed all these kids. See, uh, I had all five of my kids before they ever had any. And they used to come home here almost every weekend. And they always brought stuff for my kids. It was like small Christmas every weekend. <laughs> I'll never forget the time. Oh my gosh, we still lived in the little house. So it was just Colette and Colleen, I suppose, that, well, Carol was maybe two or three years old. But they went in the bathroom. The, the bathroom had doors that you could go in one door and out another door. It was kind of a little long, narrow bathroom. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I don't know if Uncle Les was shaving or brushing his teeth or what he was doing, and the, the kids were in there with him. And he had partial, a partial plate, and he had set it on the edge of the sink. And these kids saw it, and they were, and of course, then he showed them, you know, it was his teeth, and there, he could take his teeth out. And they asked him if he, if he could take his ears off also. <laughs> the next year for Christmas, they bought some, I don't know where they got them, some Mickey Mouse ears, and gave them to Uncle Les for Christmas. <laughs> But they thought that was something to take those teeth out. Remember when Grandpa took that eye out back and forth for, was it Shauna that did, oh, or Courtney? Know. One of them just was like, <laughs> and it just kept going in and out and in and out one day. He kept popping it out. I remember the night we were going to a party, and he had gone in the bathroom, you know, and shaved and was, had gotten all cleaned up. And it was just... The very last thing, by gosh, he was, oh, I know, because he would take his eye out and clean and wash it, you know, and, yeah. it, and it fell down in the little sink, and it oh. scooted up. You know, it was kind of like, the stuff was kind of like a marble or an agate. Yeah. And it scooted up and went in through the overflow in between the walls of the sink. Oh, no. Now we're going out for the evening. Yeah. So we called the plumber. <laughs> And he had to come and take the sink off the wall. And he took it out in the kitchen on the cupboard and dumped it, shook it out, and he got Chet's eye out of there. <laughs> okay, it was just funny because he came here with this little, I suppose it was a little a tin uh, container of tools. Yeah. The plumber, you know, this little black thing, he came in just like a doctor years ago. You know? <laughs> he got that, okay, he got the I out and we went to the party and he and his wife were coming to the same party oh. <laughs> and I can remember she took, she was talking to me and she told me, she said, oh Paul, she said, did you have to touch it? Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> like it was something real icky. <laughs> that was probably the talk of the town. Uh, no, this was just quiet between she and me. <laughs> but I, I got a kick out of that. What a dilemma, huh? Here I go. the eyeball down. <laughs> yeah. <sink. laughs> The funny thing was, you know, when he went into the city that day to get a, a fitting for his eye, yeah, they gave him a, uh, like a temporary mm -hmm. one. And because they just kind of, he said, they just reach up in these little drawers and they took out eyes until they found one <laughs> for a temporary eye. Yeah. And I still remember he came home and I was sitting like here and he sat down here and he said, well, how's it look? I couldn't even tell which one it was. Uh oh. Do you know he never ever went back and got the real one? Oh, <laughs> the temporary was that good? Well, it was. It was a very. Good, I don't know. I don't know how they could have improved it. Huh? Unless it would have been made out of some different material. Yeah. <laughs> that was. He had a lot of fun with that eye. <laughs> That's only Chet could have. Yeah. Do you feel another tape now, hon? Yeah. Okay. That should be enough. Tails. You can Twice. fly back and interview Grandma all you want. Yeah. Twice told tales. Twice told tales. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you remember when uh, your dad and Tony and the girls used to come? They came a number of times, too. Mm -hmm. I can remember that one year, I think it was um, Corey sitting on the Davenport by her mother and of course all the kids here you know the tree was loaded with gifts mm -hmm. and they just came and I don't know if they brought I used to try and have some one package for them but I don't mm -hmm. know if they brought anything or not and all the other kids have all these packages you know and I remember she was feeling bad to, to her mother and I think her mother was trying to explain to her Corey? Uh -huh. No. She was 16 when we met her, so well, she, was, she wasn't a, a little kid. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't a little kid when, she, when this went on. Yeah. She was almost always sick every year, when they, each year when they came. Yeah. You remember the year when Lee cleared out your liquor cabinet? Yeah, we were talking about that. It wasn't Lee. <laughs> probably, probably ate spider webs and all. <laughs> well, that's the year that Cassie and I were talking about it. Huh? She went to church with us to midnight mass, and my gosh, Comes time to take up the collection. Who comes down the aisle with basket? Lee. It was Lee. After he got out of the car, remember he couldn't get out of the van. Couldn't figure out how to get out of the van, so he climbed over to the front you know, seat. Remember I told you I was over to Father Ralph's yeah. 25th anniversary here a month or so ago, uh -huh. and he asked me. He said, "How are all the kids?" <laughs> well, I didn't stay long enough to tell him about all the kids. Yeah, <laughs> it would take a while. It would, yeah. They're on vacation. Yeah, Grandma's painting over there on the right. You didn't paint that one? You mean that, those cardinals down there? Yeah. No, that friend of mine, Jeanette. Oh. And she didn't know what to do with it. And I said, oh, I'd love to have it. And that's what started the collection? No, 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 no. No, I had all those before that. Except you I've been always going to take it somewhere and get a frame, but you know, it's a real heavy board or something. Uh -huh. It's not really a board or a plastic board or something. I don't know.